Hello students, my name is Cecily and I am here today to introduce you to the reading and the writing that you will be doing this year so that you can show what you know and show off on the CASP English Language Arts Performance Task that you will be taking in the spring. Okay, let's start with first things first. What is the CASP? Do you know what CASP stands for? If you guessed California, you are right. Every single student in California takes the CASP at the end of third grade, the end of fourth grade, the end of fifth grade, the end of sixth grade, the end of seventh grade, the end of eighth grade, and the end of 11th grade. You're gonna be taking this thing seven times and it's awesome. What is it? It's an assessment. And that's what that second A stands for. It is assessing what you know and what you have been learning each year. S is for student. That's you. You are the reason that we are all here today. Performance. Okay, the CASP is going to be assessing your performance in all kinds of different ways. We are specifically going to be looking at reading and writing and how you're performing when it comes to doing those two things. And it's really exciting because you have all year before you take this exam to really work on those skills. And another thing that I love about it, you remember how I said it's, you take it in third grade and fourth grade and fifth grade. It's a test of progress. It's really looking at from year to year to year, how are you progressing? How are you getting better? Which leads us to the question of why. Why do you take the CASP? I love the CASP. The reason you take the CASP is to show everyone, you, your family, your teachers, the California Department of Education, are you doing everything that you can every day to be your best and to learn more and more and more and more? Are your teachers getting the support that they need in helping you to do that? Is your school doing what it needs to do and getting the support it needs to help you do that, right? It's really a measurement. It's an assessment to say, are you learning? Are things getting better and better and better and better and better for you and your skill set? So let's look specifically at what the CASP performance task is asking you to do. What is it that it's assessing? Okay, we are specifically looking at the performance task part. And there are a few things to know about it. First, most important thing is I love it. Second is that every year, what the CASP performance task asks you to do in English language arts is to read information. It might be two articles or three, eventually it might even be four, different texts, different sources about a topic and they ask you to read it, to learn about it, read to put the information into your head and process it. And then it's gonna ask you to write about it. So here's the next thing to know. There are three different categories that it might ask you to write in. It might say, here we have given you these sources, right? These articles for you to learn. Now, can you write a narrative about them? Can you tell your reader a story informed by this information that you have just read? Second, it might instead say, can you write an informational article about it? Can you teach your reader what you have learned from reading these sources? Or a final and third option, it might say, can you write an opinion piece? Can you persuade your reader of an argument that you make informed by these articles that you have just read and learned from? So cool. So much better, guys. So much better than the assessments that I took back in third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, and 11th grade. Because I think it's really fun and you can attack it and you can learn new stuff and show what you know as you're writing about it. 
Here's the next thing to know about it. It is divided into two parts. So you read these sources, you read these articles, and then part one are short answer questions about it. So there might be three or four different shorter essays that ask you questions about what you have just read, right? They might say, can you paraphrase? Can you explain to us what you just read, but put it into your own words? Can you find, you know, specific details from what you have read that would support a particular opinion about it? So they're really saying, can you write about what you have just learned from what you read? Again, there are two parts. The second part is a longer answer. It is an essay. And again, do you recall what the three types of essays are that it might ask you to write? It could be a narrative. It could be an informational piece where you teach, or it could be an opinion piece where you are making an argument and trying to persuade your reader about an opinion you have formed about what you just read. The CASP is really neat. And no matter what, whether it's a narrative, an informational, or a, an argumentative piece, this is always true. Always true on the CASP performance task. Are you ready? Number one, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Keep going. One of the things that I think initially can be overwhelming about the CASP performance task is that there are a lot of directions. And all those directions are saying essentially is you're going to be reading these different articles about information and then we're going to ask you to write about them in two parts. So knowing that, just keep going, keep going, keep going, don't give up. Number two, take notes. I love taking notes. Taking notes is the way to stay engaged, is the way to learn, is to show what you know as you are learning it. So, you know, I have made up just this sort of sample sheet. In reality, right, this is what it looks like. Do you know what your best friend is on the cast performance task? Paper. Paper is your best friend. You can use as much of it as you want. And when you sit down to the computer, you've seen the directions that say you're going to read these things and then write about them. You get your best friend out. You get your piece of paper. And you write source number one. And then you just start, as you are reading and learning, pulling out information and making bullet points about them. Because that's how you're learning, right? You see something important in that article that you think you can use later, write it down. Because point number two is take notes. Point number three. Plan your essay before you type. One of the things that will be assessed in your final essay is how organized it is. How do you make it organized? You plan it out on a piece of paper before you type. Who's your best friend on the CASP performance task? Piece of paper. So you use a piece of paper to take your notes and you use a piece of paper to plan it out. And I like to keep my plans simple, simple, simple throughout the year. I will be making some short videos about how I like to organize my notes that I am making, depending on the genre, and you can feel that out and see if that works for you. But no matter what, however you like to organize it, plan your essay out first before you start typing. Powerhouse move, guys. Finally, point number four. Reread and improve your essay before you hit done. One of the saddest days was when I read a sample CASP long answer essay. And guys, it just said, I like pizza. It's so sad. I was like, you can do so much better than that. Got to put your love in it. Got to show what you know. And part of that is you, 
you know, you have your plan and then you type, right? And you think, oh, right, I can include this from the articles that I've read and I can include that. And you get that first draft and you might want to hit done. Don't do it. Wait. <sighs> Take a self-congratulatory deep breath. And then it's really fun. Come back to your draft. Come back to what you have written and read it as if you were a stranger, right? Try to read it through somebody else's eyes and see the ways in which you might make it even better. It's really fun. That's the CASP, performance task, ladies and gentlemen. And I love that you have all year to work on it and that I will be virtually seeing you again as we talk about, well, how do you make an excellent narrative? How do you make an excellent informational article? And what do you do to write an excellent persuasive piece? Thanks, guys.